Hi guys, it's Pianist Programmer here and you're welcome to Top Tech Stories today. This week, uh, Jimmy is not around, so we're not going to be doing so much of uh, stories. It's going to be more like a discussion kind of thing. So, let me take you through some of the recent happenings in the IT industry this week. Last week, we reported here on this channel that Zoom admitted to having an increased number of users on their platform just between the first quarter of the year 2020. Now Zoom has come out to say that they misled us in that information and they don't just have 300 million users right now. So what is the real truth? Before now, what they released in the public statement was that they had 300 million active users and what active users simply means is that the people the number of people that use zoom on a daily basis and that's not really including the number of meetings that you have per day so the number of meetings is different from active users because you could be an active user and you could also have like 10 or 20 meetings per day on zoom if that is counted you'll be counted 15 times for the 15 meetings that you have so active users it's a different number from the number of users per meetings that they have, which was the misleading information they gave us. So they corrected this subtly on, their, on the blog and The Verge picked it up and saw that the blog post was edited, reached out to them and this was what they had to say. We are humbled and proud to help over 300 million daily meeting participants stay connected during this pandemic. In a blog post on April 22nd, we unintentionally referred to these participants as users and people, and that was where the error came from. So currently, they don't have 300 million users on their platform. They said when we realized this error, we adjusted that word to participant instead of users. And this was a genuine oversight on our part. This still goes down to the issues about Zoom. And quite frankly, the other tech company giants are fast rising and trying to challenge Zoom for the number of users on their platform, Facebook, Microsoft, Google, and the likes. For Facebook, Facebook Messenger has just released an update on the Messenger app allowing 50 users at a time on a video call. If you're familiar with the Google Meet app, you will know that before now, you cannot get 16 users at the goal on the gallery view while doing your video conferencing. But recently, in the newest update of the Google Meet, now you'll be able to see 16 gallery views of 16 people when doing your video conferencing, just like the Zoom. And in fact, um, Google Meet has also promised that this will be free until this whole period is over. And this is just a way of competing with Zoom because we know the problem right now that Zoom is facing and it's the problem of security. You see, the problem is not that Zoom is a, a Chinese company. No, that's not actually the real problem. The problem is that Zoom stores its encrypted data in China. That's the problem. So Zoom has been a US company from day one and yes everyone recognizes them as a US based company and their encryption has also been there from day one but the simple problem is that the encrypted keys are stored in China who does that really like who does that like who does that so the Western world are more concerned about the fact that the encrypted keys are stored in China anyone with a good computing power can get those keys and decrypt them and eventually they have our data. So people prefer US having their data to China having their data. We've seen how Chinese have been able to control its citizens just with the use of data. So this is the main reason why a lot of people are more scared in the US now in all these sagas that we're talking about. In another news this week, Facebook's new tool can help you transfer your photos from Facebook to Google. You remember last year when, was it last year or 2018? Precisely, uh, I think 
that was 2018, but I can't remember now. But I remember that there was a, there was a time when Facebook was facing the data privacy issues where Zuckerberg was summoned to the Senate to answer a few questions about how our data is being handled by Facebook. Are users actually safe? Is Facebook being safe? Senator, I think Facebook is safe. I use it, and my family use it, and all the people I love and care about use it all the time. Why should we trust Facebook to make the necessary changes? We have made a lot of mistakes in running the company. Do you think the average consumer understands what they're signing up for? I don't think that the average person likely reads that whole document. With that came up some legislatures and some laws and some um, protection rights on how Facebook keeps our data and releases the information to us if we so need them. So right now what they're doing is that they're integrating themselves into Google such that there is a way you can send your pictures or uh, back up your pictures or something, something like that to Google. Right now, I don't know whether this um, feature or this tool is available in all the regions of the world, but to assess this service, if you so find it on your Facebook profile, go to your Facebook profile, click on your profile picture where you have settings, under settings, you find a title called my information or something like that. Something like my Facebook information. So when you get there, you see a tool that can help you transfer your photos to Google. But first, you have to sign in from Google. It means that there's a third party authentication service from Facebook to Google where you have to sign in first before you can then move your pictures to Google. There is no more argument that this lockdown period is going to last for a little bit longer. So you see apps like TikTok, Instagram, WhatsApp, Facebook Messenger, Skype, Zoom, all thriving this period. And particularly one of them I'm talking about today is the TikTok. Since this period started, I mean the period of lockdown, you know there's been so many things happening online activities such as challenges sing dance whatever what have you challenges tiktok now has recorded over 2 billion downloads on the play store are you surprised no i don't think you should be because tiktok has been the app of choice since this period started arguably so we don't know why instagram has not done so much um as the tiktok is doing right now but i would argue that it's because there's a chinese hand in it yeah so for those of you that don't know the tiktok is the chinese app and in china it is called doing uh, i don't know whether you've seen videos and after the videos something pops up and it's like doing doing something like that but that's the tiktok version globally although tiktok is not even allowed in china can you believe that TikTok is not allowed in China because China has its own version of TikTok. So what they did was that they made Douyin, which is the TikTok in China, separate from the TikTok that is going to go global. So they created TikTok and exposed it to the world and never allowed people in China to even use it at all. Why? Because they want to successfully be able to capture your data and guess the vast majority of the people that are on this app by the statistics on the app store it says that we have more indians more chinese and more u.s citizens on the tiktok app and who carries the greatest number of users of course it's the u.s of course i mean you, you're not surprised about that a lot of Americans are crazy about TikTok. I don't know why, but it's it's alarming. Can they not just open their eyes to see that these apps are Chinese apps? And eventually, the sole aim is to capture the data. And this is why the US government is kicking, it, like strongly kicking against TikTok right now. And in fact, because the statistics are showing, I mean, the numbers don't lie, right? 2 billion downloads on the Play Store. Now, the question will be most of all the apps that are used in the US are under the law that anybody that requests for their data, their data should be given to them. For example, if I wanted my data from Facebook, I want to know what Facebook is using my data for. I, 
can request for it. If I wanted my data on Quora, I can request for it. If I wanted my data on Twitter, I can also request for it. In fact, if I want my account to be deleted and deleted forever, because most of the time when you delete your account on social media, that's what you call soft delete. Your account is not immediately deleted, like trashed permanently. It's kept in a soft delete mode, kind of, for maybe up to three, four months. And guess what? Your account can still be used for analytics. So the question is, would TikTok be under the same law, like under the same scrutiny of giving out the data to its users when they request for it? That would be the big question. I want to know what you guys think about that. Please leave them in the comment section of this video. Interesting this week, Canon has come up with a camera that will allow you to use that as a webcam for your video conferences. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can make your compatible Canon EOS camera into your main web camera using only a USB cable and our brand new EOS webcam utility beta software. So there's something that is really annoying about video conferencing these days, and it's the quality of your webcam in front of your laptop. Because most of those apps tap into your webcam from your laptops uh, to use this functionality of video conferencing. So Canon has seen this challenge and they've produced a camera. And in fact, some of their older cameras too will also be able to work with this functionality. First, you will need to download the new software. Head over to our service and support page to download EOS Webcam Utility Beta. Once the download is complete, extract the zip file and double click on EOS Webcam Utility installation. After installation, you will need to restart your computer. Now let's get your camera ready. And the functionality is simple. You produce a camera such that you can just plug via USB into your system. And when you want to do any video conferencing, like maybe Skype, Zoom, or Facebook Messenger, or Instagram Live, or whatever it is that you want to do that requires you to use your webcam from your laptop, you can choose from the settings of which camera to use. And you can choose from the Canon as well. And that will help you get a video, a better video quality for your video conferencing. WhatsApp has also discovered a way to keep people glued to WhatsApp. And right now, they've also increased the number of gallery view of the users on video calls to eight per screen. So before now, you will know that it was only four. If you made a group call on WhatsApp, you will only be able to see four people at a go. But now you can see eight. That's tremendous. And I think I would love to um, check out this new feature. If you have recently updated your WhatsApp and you find this feature right there, please leave a comment in the comment section below as well. And let me just say this, that before you can have access to this feature, all the people on the call must have the updated WhatsApp version. So the WhatsApp version that is allowed for this particular feature must be present on the phones of all the people involved in this video conference. And finally, we have seen the effect of what one single tweet on Twitter can do to the stock of a company. That's unbelievable. Elon Musk, this week, made a single tweet and that tweet got a lot of people shaking. Elon Musk said, Tesla stock price is too high and just that single tweet wiped off $14 billion of Tesla's value. Okay, you probably might not understand what I'm saying. So let me explain this to you. Since Tesla opened their company to the public, there's something we call initial public offering. This is when a company opens up part of its shares to the public in a certain percentage. So if I have a company right now, which of course I will, <laughs> yeah, your boy will have a company, that's for sure. So if I have a company right now and I am the sole owner of the company, 100%, if I want to open up my company to the public, because my company is currently private, it's like private limited company. If I want to open up that company to the public, I would specify a certain percentage of the company to the public where the public can then buy, invest in and get the profit or get their returns after a certain period of time. This is what Tesla did some years ago and they are reaping the rewards today 
we've seen a lot of Tesla products, their cars, SpaceX, and the likes and the likes. So it turns out that there's been a lot of investment into Tesla and they don't have products to churn out that can support those investments. So let me give you an example. If I'm an investor in Tesla and I invested $100 and I expect that Tesla will use my $100 into production, maybe into their cars or into their batteries or power supplies or SpaceX pro projects and stuff like that. And eventually after maybe a year or two, I'll get back $200, which is 100%. Now, the reason why Elon Musk is crying out is that there's not been so much of production in Tesla and it seems like the investment is so much than what is being done in the company. And in the long run, it will so happen that that hundred dollar that I deposited will just be sitting down in the company, whereas I'm expecting two hundred dollars over a certain period of time. Whereas that money did not really do anything. That money was just seated there, and eventually, I'm expecting a return. So the money did not do anything, but I'm expecting a return. Eventually, when I get the two hundred dollars, which is hundred percent, Tesla will have lost hundred percent as well which is hundred dollars because they've not done anything with the money they've not traded with the money they've not invest invested that money into something they've not used that money for anything yet their investors want returns on investment and this is the same reason why Elon Musk is crying out saying I think the investments in Tesla's are too much like guys maybe we can do like a reduction here like indirectly that's what he said but not like the way I'm saying it right now. So he made this tweet and immediately after that tweet, investors pulled out their money, some investors backed out and Tesla lost $14 billion just because of one tweet. How powerful can a man be? And how powerful can one tweet be? He also added this in another tweet saying, I am selling almost all my physical possessions will own no house i don't know what that means though like you will not have house you will not have where to sleep you will not have where to live i don't know people like elon musk are i i i, I feel like this guy is like the number one citizen right now in the world like there's no how something happens and we don't talk about elon musk and he has placed himself there like he has placed himself at that level where there's nothing happening right now in the world where elon musk is not Part of it if you're talking about alleviating the coronavirus is behind it if you're talking about production of ventilators right now that the covid 19 is ravaging is also is also behind it if you're talking about the cheap implant uh, for the brain to be able to function is behind it if you're talking about the journey to mars via spacex is also behind it so he has placed himself there that's that's just the way i see it so guys let me know your thoughts put them in the comment section of this video what do you think did he do the right thing did he make mistake for posting that tweet i want to know your views put them in the comment section as always it's our custom to after the show give out two questions because the competition is still running and you know it's a criteria to win the competition so if you know the answers to these questions put them in the comment section as well number one how many views can the whatsapp hold now for a single video call number two how many active users did zoom report that they now have on their platform all right it's been nice discussing this week and if you are yet to subscribe to this channel I would like you to just do that right now there's a red button below this video that reads subscribe and if you hit it guess what it's free no charges at all so go ahead right now hit that button and also hit the bell beside it it will give you notification when we post a new video until next week on top tech stories bye bye